I like the monolithic architecture and I also like microservices. I think both of them have their advantages and disadvantages depending on the product that you're building. But what if I told you that there's actually a middle ground? A middle ground that you can use to have the best of both worlds. Well, this middle ground is called self-contained systems. Today we're gonna dive deep into this architecture which is used by a lot of large-scale companies. I hope it's gonna be interesting and fun, so without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so here's a quick refresher on a monolithic architecture. A monolith is basically a collection of different modules and services that live inside a single machine. It can be an EC2 instance from AWS, right? A single machine that has all of these big modules. So what are the downsides? Well, first of all, continuous delivery is going to be difficult because you cannot release so many things at the same time because they're very coupled with each other and limited flexibility when it comes to scaling a single module, for example, and of course you cannot use different stacks because you're going to be locked into one tech stack within the whole architecture. So the microservices on the other hand are a different extreme. They're very flexible, I would say too flexible because they're modularized and they live inside a single system but also suffer from an overhead in orchestration, meaning you have to manage every microservice independently. You have to manage their versions, you have to deploy them separately, you have to also define what a single microservice is going to be responsible for. And there is a very good practice called domain-driven design, meaning that you clearly define what a microservice is responsible for, but this is a whole different practice that comes with an overhead when you go for microservices, right? So what if I told you there is something in between? As I said, it's called self-contained system. So let's take a look. Again, a monolith is a bunch of things in one inside one box, right? And you have various different domains. So inside one monolithic architecture in one machine, you can have, let's say in case of an Amazon website, Let's go here. So we can have the basket, we can have the orders, we can have this page, we can have Prime Video. So everything is basically lives inside one big box, right? I don't think this is very useful in case of an Amazon because this box or this machine is going to be either it has to be huge or it's not going to be able to withstand such a stress from all these uh, services, right? And also this box contains a lot of modules inside, right? And, and libraries as well. So if you put all of these things inside one thing, it's, it's gonna grow. It's gonna grow like this and it's going to become big. So you have to do something with it, all right? So what, what, what we can do is cut this box in, a, in vertical lines. So we can have different columns, right? So we can cut it along different domains. So this column, can be responsible for Amazon Music. This column can be responsible for Amazon Video. This column can be responsible for the products that you see inside the Amazon right website. And as soon as we split them into these kind of chunks, this becomes a self-contained system. So this one box or this one column is called self-contained system, right? And the self-contained system of course is self-contained, but it also can talk to other or the outside world via a special API or lightweight messaging. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. So a self-contained system can be developed by one team and can be plugged in wherever you want. So let's say we build Amazon Video self-contained system and we can plug it in either on Amazon website or we can plug it in in a different context, right? It's basically a system that lives on its own. So a self-contained system is gonna have its own user interface, right? So it's not like we're building the whole website, we're only building this chunk. So Amazon Music, we're only building this page. This would be a self-contained system and it has its own backend, meaning business logic, and it has a separate data story, meaning it has its own database. Just a quick one, guys, in case if you're wondering how exactly you can support my channel, well, the simplest thing would be simply smashing the like button in case if you're getting value from this video and making sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss any future videos. Thank you very much and let's continue. Okay, so the business logic part only solves problems that it that arise in its core domain. So meaning that the business logic of this Amazon video 
where now in video a self-contained system is only going to be responsible for itself. So let's say we have an, an API for, I mean, music, not video, for Amazon Music, and it's also only going to serve requests that are coming for Amazon Music and nothing else. Not for your account, not for video, and not for the basket or anything else, all right? So it, and it's going to communicate only with a, with a well-defined interface. Now, even if we're talking about the self-contained system, the business logic can actually consist of microservices. So as you can see, these boxes inside this bigger box are microservices. So as you can see, we have the best of both worlds. We can use microservices within self-contained systems. And of course, every self-contained system brings its own data storage. Now, this point was kind of mind blowing for me because turns out, let me show you. So let's say we have two self-contained systems, one AA and the second one is B. So, and both of them have their own databases. This is a database and this is a database for the or other system. Now, what if self-contained system a needs to use some data from self-contained system B. Oh, and by the data, I mean literally the data that self-contained system B has in its own database, right, in here. So what we want to do, what we have to do is not query the database of self-contained system B from A, but rather take this whole database that we have here and literally make a copy and put it in our self-contained system. This might sound counterintuitive because we're literally copying all the data twice, but this is the idea, this is how self-contained system work. We are having some redundant data, as we say here, but we are following a strict, uh, our strict boundary, so to say, right? And now let's say these redundancies, because we literally copied so much data, are tolerable as long as we respect our own boundaries, all right? So, and, and the cool thing about that is different self-contained systems can use their own databases. We can use a CouchDB, our other team can use Neo4j, but of course, if we want to use their database, we would have to find a way to copy that data, but in our own format. So it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one copy, right? So how are databases and data shared between self-contained systems? There are multiple ways. So first of all, data replication, it's a very dumb way, and you can use this one, especially when the data doesn't change that often. So for example, let's say we have a catalog of books and for example and for some reason our store does not accept any new books so these books are there forever then of course you can just replicate the data from a different self-contained system the second one is data api so a data api would simply look like this let's say we are having some update on one database and we can simply listen for the updates on this database and automatically trigger a copy operation on our database. And the next one could be a shared database or schema. So an important he note here is that multiple self-contained systems might use the same database. So let's say we are using a single database that is shared across two self-contained systems and I'm gonna place it in the center. So this one is gonna use it and this one is also gonna use it. So the key here is that you can we can use the same database, but we must not share any data. So the, the, the templates or the views of the database of for the data that's gonna come to our system, the system A is going to be different than B, all right? So we're gonna have different templates and the way we use this data. So inside a self-contained system, we can make our own technical decision, meaning that we go to Amazon Music, like we really don't have to ask Prime, Mid Prime Video self-contained system for the decisions that we make on our self-contained system on Amazon Music. We are really decoupled from them, okay? Well, now it doesn't mean that we are not under the same, same organization. We're still working from for Amazon, but we're still separate in our decisions as a team and as a product. So self-contained system is also going to have its own product owner, a product backlog, meaning things that it's working on, its own KPIs, meaning things that it considers important for its product for that brings value to users and a specific roadmap where, where, where the product wants to grow, okay? So let's say we have three teams and every one team is going to be responsible for each self-contained system, okay? But also don't forget that a single team can manage multiple self-contained systems. So let's say team one can manage one self-contained system, this one and this one, but and a self-contained system cannot be managed by multiple teams. 
So teams really should not collide in their work, okay? And a self-contained system must be integrated together, right? So for example, if we go to this Amazon's website, somebody has to put these links here. Or for example, we have the same header, right? Doesn't matter where you go. If you go to customer service, if you go to music or you go to Prime, we still have the same header, meaning the header stays the same. Uh, but this section changes by the place that I that I click, meaning we always have one parent where our self-contained systems are being injected to. And of course, you have multiple ways of doing that. You can use the micro frontends architecture. You can have mo model federation and you can simply use iframes. So for example, you can simply put a link from one uh, self-contained system to another one to route the users. Or you can have a redirection can be used both ways. Or as we saw in Amazon's example, you can literally take the system two and place it here. So the system two is Amazon Music and it can be placed inside the Amazon websites view. So there can be a separate team that manages only this header of the Amazon, okay? And I also have a video on this similar topic if you're interested in scaling micro frontends, check this out. To further minimize the coupling, you, we also need to make sure, or we need to take care of the way how our backends or our APIs are uh, communicating with each other, all right? Because as we said, we don't want any coupling between our self-contained systems, but sometimes you need to communicate with other systems, all right? And the preferred way is actually using AMQP or MQTT protocols, which are asynchronous protocols. So you shouldn't use synchronous HTTP calls, but rather these. So it can be a Kafka or a RabbitMQ, all right? So that events are handled asynchronously. Let's take a look at an example. So let's say we um, system B or system A wants to get some data from system B. All right, let us let me draw an arrow. So we want to get some data. We wouldn't do it this way when it comes to self-contained systems. What we do instead, is actually we pull the data by subscribing to this data. And the way we subscribe to it is again using, for example, Kafka or RabbitMQ. Let's say we have, we define an event hub or like a topic in the Kafka world or rather in RabbitMQ world. Let's say the topic is called order topic, right? Let me actually change the name. So we will call this order topic, meaning all the things that are happening that are related to orders are going to go over this bus. And self-contained system two, is this one here, it creates a new event called order create. So it creates an order and this flows through the topic and self-contained system A is actually subscribed to this topic. So it really wants to be notified every time some kind of an order is, is created. So this way we can ensure that we are communicating with other self-contained systems asynchronous. Okay, so what are the benefits? First, an integrated system of systems may, might have benefits. First of all, as we said, we don't have any coupling. So the overall, the system is very resilient and systems can be individually scaled. For example, we see that we have a lot of demand for Amazon video and not that much demand for Amazon music. Then we can take this self-contained system, which is Amazon video and scale it, all right? We can make it more scalable and keep the music like it is because we don't have any demand, all right? So if you're going from a monolith to self-contained systems, there's no big bank release. First of all, you can simply take this monolithic application and in small chunks, like create some small self-contained systems. So a migration, of course, is gonna take time. If, you, if, if your organization is big, migrations always take time but there's a way to split your monolith one by one, domain by domain. And by the way, we're gonna have a video on domain driven design. So you can split it one by one and have self-contained system. So when should you switch from a monolith to a self-contained system? Whenever you see that you're having too much overhead maintaining all these services inside a monolith, and probably if you are having already two teams, which consist of eight developers or seven developers, you're already going to be have a hard time with a monolithic architecture. And when should you switch from a microservices to self-contained systems? Well, if you have been developing with microservices and at some point you already are sick of microservices because it's too much overhead managing them separately, especially between the teams, maybe you should really be coupled or decoupled from each team and have self-contained systems. So you can try it out. All right, so the conclusion is 
again, it as always depends on your business needs and on your product. A lot of large companies are using self-contained systems because they have so many sections here. Uh, it's, it's really hard to have teams that are sharing their responsibilities. No, you are going to have a separate team for home and kitchen. You're going to have a separate team for music. And of course, they're aligning with each other because they, for example, need the same styling on the website. They're aligning with each other on recurring meetings within the company, but still they're responsible for only their domains, aka self-contained system. Self-contained system is actually coming from a German company called InnoQ. So if you want to read more about it, check out their website. I think they have a pretty good website with interesting articles. So that was it, guys. If you're interested in similar topics, check out my architecture and system design playlist. I think it's going to be interesting for you and I'm going to see you in the next one. Goodbye.